Podcast.com. I made this really cool. At least I think it's really cool. Maybe I shouldn't boast so quick. Maybe you guys don't think it's really cool. But uh, I think it's awesome. Okay, so this is a review of Revelations chapter 2 and 3, organized and formatted. The following is a com- compilation, organized collection of all the statements in chapter 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation. Doing this allows us to focus on the three types of statements made by Jesus to the churches. Number one, correcting, number two, encouraging, and number three, the blessings. I believe this provides insight for what is required by God and Jesus and what to avoid and the rewards of being obedient to their will. Okay. So what I did is I literally took all the letters to the churches and like, well, this is the warnings. These are the corrections of the blessings, you know, and these are like the things they did right. And so now we can read it as one whole statement. And so I have it right here. So we have all these opening statements at the top. So let's read it. It says, opening statement of authority. It says, he holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lamp, lamp stands. The first and the last, who became dead and lived, who has the sharp sword with two edges, the son of God, he who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished metal, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. The amen, the faithful and true witnesses. The head of the creation of God says these things. You know, what a statement. Because like if like the president of the United States walks out and goes, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. It's like a one sentence. There he is. You know, and everybody oohs and ahs at that. Oh, it's the president. I mean, look at the statements of Jesus. I'm this. I'm that. These are my descriptions. This is my appearance. This is the power I have. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Who am I? Right. And then who are you? So this is like Jesus saying, listen, guys. And he did it in a very polite way because he spread it out over seven churches. He just didn't come up and whack everybody up against the head with it. He's like, I'll give a sprinkling here and a sprinkling there. But you really need to know about who you're talking to and who's talking to you. Okay. So, the next part, correcting statements, the things God does not want us doing. Okay? I'm sure it's a lot longer than the... <laughs> right. So, here it goes. It says, I have against you that you left your first love. That is the most, probably the saddest line in Scripture to me. And I'm just going to stop right there. That when we first accept Jesus and we first accept Christ, we become on fire. Where our hearts explode in us. We might be failing and getting it wrong and how we're going about it because we're like a kid with a weapon run, beating people around in the head. Or the, but we can't help ourselves because we're just so excited about it. And it's so refreshing and new. And we're getting that fuel, that jet fuel in our soul. And we don't know what to do because we're just kind of, ah, you know, I'm so excited, you know. And so this is one of his corrections. I have against you that you left your first love, that you let that go. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Okay, because you have there those who hold the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice to idols, to commit fornication. So you will also have those who hold the teachings of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent. But if I, if not, I will come to you quickly and will fight with you uh, with them by the sword of my mouth. You allow that woman Jezebel to teach. She's saying herself to be a prophetess. And to cause my servants to go astray and to commit fornication and to eat idol sacrifices. And I gave her time that she should repent or might repent of her fornications. And she did not repent. Behold, I am throwing her into a bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction unless they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the church will know that I am he who searches the reins and the hearts. And I will give to every one of you according to your works. And I know your works. That you have a name that you live and are dead, but watchful, uh, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works to be uh, fulfilled before God. Remember then how you have received and heard and hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you would be 
cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Do you not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? I counseled you to buy for me gold purified by fire, so that you may be rich, and white clothing, so that you may be clothed, so that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, so that you may see, as I may, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous, repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him, and be he with me. Right? So those are all the corrective statements in the book of Revelation. You see some commonality, false religion, idols, wor worshiping sacrifice idols, losing your first love, not maintaining the things that you have received to keep them strong, right? Putting too much pride and in, in self-importance in your own eyes, right? Thinking that you have every physical thing you need, so you no, lo no longer need spiritual things, right? So these are the general statements of Jesus to the churches. Like, listen, guys, these are what you're doing. Boom, boom, boom. Not, they're not all too dissimilar, right? They kind of have a common thread. They've left God. They're not wondering after God. Their hearts are not on fire, right? And I believe it's the Church of Philadelphia is the only church that didn't have a corrective statement. All right, encouraging statements. What God wants us to do, right? So these are the positive things that God was like, hey, do these things, okay? It says, I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot bear those who are evil. Dang, good thing. And you try, try those pretending to be apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you have borne and have patience for my name's sake. You have labored and have not fainted. You have that this that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. I know your works and your tribulation is poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those saying themselves to be Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Do not all, at all fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison so that you may be tried and you'll have tribulation ten days. I know your works and where you live, even where Satan's seat is. And you hold fast my name and have not denied my faith, even in those days in which Antipas, my faithful martyr, who is slain among you, where Satan dwells. I know your works and your love and your service and your faith and your patience and your, and your works and the last to be more than the first. As many as do not have this evil doctrine and, and who have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put on you no other burden. I know your works. Behold, I have given before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength and have kept my words and have not denied my name. Behold, I give out of those of the synagogue of Satan, those saying themselves to be Jews or not, but lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept the words of my patience. I also keep will keep you from the hour of temptation, which will come upon the hab habitable world to try those who who will dwell upon the earth. Behold, I will come quickly. Hold fast to that which you have so that no one may take your crown. Right? That's encouraging stuff. Like these are things you're doing right. You might be impoverished for me, but you've remained faithful. Right? There's persecution, but you have remained faithful. Uh, you have kept the truth and remained faithful. So what he keeps praising here, guys, he's like, listen, you don't put up with sin. You don't put up with the evil. You don't put up with the false doctrines. You have kept faithful my word. Right? And even though they persecute you, even though they're killing you, you have remained faithful. Right? And he says, For this I will keep you from the hour of temptation which will come upon the whole world to try those who dwell upon the earth. He says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast. What does that mean? Hold fast. That means with all your might, don't let go. Hold fast. As if your life depends upon it. If you're dangling from a rope off the edge of a cliff, Hold fast to what you have received. Do not let the devil or any other person or thing rip it out of your hands. And what's the next part? So then no one may take your crown. Right? So what are you grasping? You're grasping onto the crown of life, the crown of his righteousness, the crown of eternity. That's what you got your hands on. And he's basically saying the only people that can take it out of your hands and the only situation that can take it out of your hands is the situation the people you allow it to. That if you, lo you love your family more than me, if you love your life more than me, if you love your possessions more than me, you can't keep both. You're going to have to open up that hand, give up your crown to try to retain that which God is trying to give you. You're going to release it to retain what he's telling you to give up. 
right? So you can't try to hold on to the world and hold on to your crown. It's impossible, right? If you're going to hold fast, you're going to have one thing in your hand. It's that crown. You're holding on to the, the hem of Jesus's garment, right? You got your arm locked around his shoulders and his head, hugging his neck, saying, I'm not letting go to hug the things of the world, right? Now, Jesus says, if you do that, he said, they'll pat you on the back, say, I got you, brother. I got you, sister. We're in this. We got, I got you. But if you sit there and try to play patty cake and put one hand on God's shoulder, Jesus' shoulder, and the other hand on all your possessions stuff and all your desires and wants and wishes, it doesn't work. You're not holding fast. You're betraying Christ. You're betraying God. You're lukewarm. You're going to be throw up. You're going to be fire in hell. You're not going to get anything. So what are you saying? You have to make a choice. You have to choose one or the other. There's no middle ground. There's no 50-50. That's one or the other. And don't think you can go 90, 10%. Like, I'll, I'll give God 90% and keep my 10% for myself. No, that 10% trumps the 90. God doesn't play play like that game where you can give him kind of it. It's like, God, I give you nine of my fingers. No, Lance, I want both of your hands. No, I, I give you nine of my fingers. That's not the offer. The offer is you give me 10 of your fingers, I'll give you it back and I'll give you more. But if you hold back any, you don't get none of the promise. Right. You have sacrificed because you love that one part more than me and that will not re require my, my goodness to fall upon you. Right? And so when we are with Christ and Jesus, we hold on to that crown, we hold on to the hem of the garment, we put our arm around Jesus. We're like, okay, let's do this. We're on, you know. It's like when you like when your kid you give your kid a, a piggyback ride and they got their arms wrapped around your neck and you're kind of choking, you know, and they're having fun, you're like, Ugh, you know. We gotta be that kid on Jesus' back. We gotta be wrapping and hugging him so hard, so tight, we're like, We ain't going nowhere. You know, I'm with you, right? Wherever we're going, that's where we're going. <laughs> All right, uh, the blessing, the good stuff, right? The reward to those who overcome. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. How wonderful is that? It says, be faithful to death. In other words, you're going to die, and I will give you a crown of life. He will not uh, be hurt by the second death. I will give to eat of the hidden manna. I will give to him a white stone and a new stone, uh, uh, in the stone, a new name written. So let's real, cap, real fast at the top of page eight. It says, we got the tree, of the par uh, right to the paradise, uh, tree of paradise, sorry, right? We got a crown of life, right? We got the hidden manna. We got the white stone with the new name written in it, okay? So uh, top of page eight. And then a stone, a new name written, which no man knows except him who receives it. But that which you have, hold fast until I come. And he who keeps on works to the end, to him I'll give power over the nations, right? Authority. And he will rule them with a rod of iron as the vessel of potter. They will be broken to pieces, even as I have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. In other words, they're not wrapped up in sin and idolatry and going 90-10 with God. And they'll walk with me in white, for they are worthy. This one will be clothed in white clothing, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and my new name. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Boom. What a wonderful list of blessings, right? I love the name thing, right? I'm going to write my name. I'm going to write God's name. You're going to have names on you for eternity, right? You're going to have God's name, Jesus' new name. You're going to have a new name and you know, you're getting all these wonderful blessings. So now we've read over the corrections, right? The encouragements, the things to do, right? And now we've read over the blessings, Right. And so I encourage you to go back and reread this list and go slower and then pick out your Bible and look up Revelations two and three and pick them out. They're all there. OK. It says he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to churches. If you feel so led of the Lord and want to know how to donate to this ministry outreach, please visit brotherlance.com and scroll down to the bottom of the main page for the PayPal link. Thank you. And may God's blessing rest upon you. Brotherlamps.com